Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to RC Overload Tuesdays, where we answer your questions here on the show. Uh, before I get into today's questions, I just wanted to give you guys a huge thank you. Uh, last Tuesday's episode was a huge hit. I didn't honestly think it was going to be as big of a hit as it was. You guys gave me so many questions uh, to answer here on the show. It's awesome. I've been debating whether or not to do this type of series for a long time now. And you guys just proved that this is perfect for the show. Um, and I, it's just going to be awesome. <laughs> Um, but real quick, also, uh, I know you guys asked a lot of questions. There was a ton of questions uh, that was asked on last Tuesday's episode. Um, but just as a reminder, guys, I do only answer so many questions per episode. Uh, I kind of pick them at random a little bit. Sometimes I might keep them, you know, if the questions are kind of relevant to one another, I might answer a couple of those in one video. Uh, just to kind of keep it on the same basis in a sense. But for the most part, I kind of randomize the questions I ask. Uh, and especially as these episodes keep going on and on, there's going to be more and more questions. Uh, I'm not trying to ignore you guys if I don't answer your question. I'm not trying to, um, you know, not answer your questions by any means. So don't get discouraged if I don't answer your question. Again, it's mostly just I pick at random, okay? So, with that said, let's start today's episode with our very first question. Hi, I enjoy your videos. Fun to watch. I'd like to get your opinion on the Blade 230S. Seems to fly well the way it is, but being an RC aircraft pilot, I'm concerned about the C of G. Have you balanced that, Heli? And what would you advise? Thanks in advance. Hey, Gary. So as far as the Blade 230 helicopter goes, it actually is a very well-balanced helicopter. The one thing I did notice when uh, I got it out of the box on the first time that I flew it, uh, I would notice that at times it felt a little on the tail-heavy side. It would be a little more tilted back, not significantly, and not enough to make it inoperable to fly or make it difficult to fly. Um, but it was definitely a little more on the tail-heavy side. However, I do know that if you change the position of the battery pack, uh, on this guy, this is my 230 heli right here, if you change the battery placement, which I don't have the battery in it, but you can take a look at the front, the battery would go right here. It has a set of bump stops right about where my finger is at. If you pull the battery a little bit forward, you can play around with the center of gravity and getting it to balance out a little bit more and make it a little better. I never actually have my battery pushed all the way back up. It's usually off by maybe a quarter of an inch, maybe a little less than that. And that's kind of where I found a good spot for the center of gravity. Uh, but I also did install the Micro Heli aluminum uh, bar here. Oh my God, I'm going totally mind blank. Um, <laughs> we're just gonna call it the bar. Uh, the Micro Heli bar here. Um, and it did lighten up the rear end of this quite a bit. Now, once I did that, I did again have to play around with the center of gravity just a little bit uh, because like I said, it did lighten up the rear end. It wasn't as tail heavy as it was before. So, that is uh, an option for you. Just position the battery a little more forward if you notice that it is a little on the tail heavy side. And obviously if you put in some carbon fiber stuff for the tail, um, and get that aluminum bar. <laughs> um, it, it'll probably lighten up the rear end a little bit for you as well. Uh, so you really shouldn't have a problem. Again, the balance of the heli, even in air, on safe mode and in expert mode, is extremely well uh, set up on the thing. It's perfect. So I wouldn't be that concerned about it. Going from flying aircrafts to learning how to fly helicopters is an entirely different world. So, you know, take your time with it, practice. Um, and for me, I'm probably 30 flights in on it, and I'm still no expert, you know, especially as you guys can see. Still can't go inverted yet. But hopefully this coming year we will. God, that's going to be scary. Next question. Recently acquired a Yeti. Would you recommend beadlock or glue? Looking to get a set of Scorpios. Uh... For the Yeti, from my experience, uh, I would highly recommend getting a set of beadlock wheels for it. Uh, the Yeti as it is, whether you're running it on 2S or 3S, is a very torquey truck. Uh, there is a lot of torque out of that motor and with the gearing setup in it. So, 
I ran in the very beginning uh, glued wheel uh, tires on my rims and they would just con constantly kept ripping apart. You know, I could probably get a battery pack or two through it before the tire just completely fell off the rim. Uh, I did, however, uh, and I've only tried these beadlock wheels, is the Proline 2.2 uh, beadlocks. And once I put those on there, I had one issue where the tire fell off of it, and that was just because I didn't think I sat it correctly in the bead. Uh, but once I fixed it and tightened down all the screws, made sure everything was nice and tight on them, I never had a problem again, whether I was running on 2S or 3S. So I would highly recommend that you go with a beadlock setup and just make sure that that tire is sitting correctly in the bead uh, and make sure those screws are all tightened down evenly, holding the tire in place, and you probably shouldn't have an issue with it. Um, but like I said, the Yeti is a very torquey truck, so you know, make sure everything is 100% on that. It is a good idea this video series, Matt. Do you have any ideas for attaching multi-panel RC bodies as a number of drift cars are two or more pieces now? For, um, for drift cars, I've only experienced one body where it had multi-pieces to the body. Um, and I had to do myself a lot of uh, scrounging around trying to figure out how to attach like the bumpers and the body panels that came separate on it. Uh, the one thing that I found that almost everybody does that works really well, and even what I did to my body, um, was actually use double-sided sticky tape. It's very thin, so you really can't notice it, um, the separation between the two body panels. It's not enough uh, to where, you know, you would see a separation. It would actually make it look like it was all one. Also, it comes down to where you're placing the double-sided sticky tape on it. Um, you know, it's just kind of like a trial and error type of deal. That is probably the best way that I found, easiest and simplest way. I've seen guys try glue. I tried glue. It didn't work. It didn't hold. Um, I've even seen guys use screws, uh, little tiny screws and nuts to hold the pieces in. But again, those pieces that had the screws were actually designed to have that look with it, more like the wheel wells with the screw holes going through it. So I would say the best thing from my experience, now again, I've only done this to one body. Uh, so I don't have a ton of experience doing a whole bunch of different bodies and trying different things. But the glue method didn't work for me, uh, but the double side sticky tape method did work and it worked very well. So give that a shot. Last question. What are the best upgrades after tires, servo, and links? That's kind of a tough one. Um, that It really is, you know, and um, I'm going to kind of put it like this. There's... In my opinion, there's two different types of people in the RC world when it comes to doing upgrades and stuff like that. There's the ones who like to upgrade as soon as they get the truck, you know, maybe run it a couple times, but they'll just upgrade everything that they can, you know, within their budget or so forth. And then there's those that will upgrade depending on if something breaks. They'll just leave it stock until it breaks. Obviously, if you're, you know, you're that type of person that wants to just wait until something breaks, you know, you'll wait till it breaks and then upgrade from there. If you're more of the, one of those that just like to upgrade everything to really improve the truck all at once, then I would say start looking more into steering. Uh, and it also depends too, is the truck a basher or is it like a crawler? Um, that really does play a huge effect into what it is that you're doing, you know, as far as upgrades go. If you're a basher, Definitely, in my opinion, look more into steering and suspension upgrades. Shocks, hubs, uh, knuckles, that kind of stuff. I'm a stickler for having a nice suspension and steering setup on all my trucks. Um, sometimes I wait until, you know, it breaks. Sometimes I just go ahead and just upgrade everything. You know, it just, it depends on the truck for me. Um... But definitely look more into suspension and steering stuff. I would say after that, you know, look into drivetrain things, um, better axles, better diff gears, stuff like that. If you're a crawler, it depends again on the use and what, what you're doing because obviously a crawler is not going to take the same punishment that a basher is going to do. So your upgrades could vary a little bit um, in what you're going to do next as far as what is required and what you want to do with the truck. You could, you know, if it's crawler, you could look into recovery options like winches and D-rings. Uh, you could be looking into LED lights if you wanted to do it next. Um, better bumpers. 
it really depends on you know what it is that you're doing with the truck i mean it's kind of a broad question but i would base it off of that usually as a general sense sometimes the first things that i do is you know tires links steering um, and then go into electronics and drivetrain components at that point so hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea all right guys well that's all the time i have for today thank you guys uh i look forward to doing next tuesday's episode uh, i got a few more questions already planned out for that one but as always feel free to ask your questions in the comment below uh, we're also going to be asking you guys to ask your questions here occasionally on Facebook or even Twitter. So if you are following us on that, make sure you're on the lookout. Uh, we're going to start pulling questions from everywhere. So that's it for now, guys. Thanks so much. And uh, I'll see you guys on Friday when we show you a few upgrades on the SCX-10 II. And we answer a question that quite a few of you guys have been asking. So we'll leave it at that. All right, guys. Till next time. I'll see you on the next. RC Overlook. Okay, I almost forgot. I was just on my way to take off to go do some things. When I realized I forgot to give you guys the video suggestion of the week. I apologize. This is only my second time doing RC Overload Tuesdays. So I'll make sure I don't do that again. But my video suggestion of the week goes to Hemistorm, where he takes a trip out to Las Vegas. He's got a six-part series on it. And at the time of me filming this, he's only released a couple of videos, but he will be releasing more throughout the week. So feel free to check out the first video right here and then check out on his YouTube homepage. Yeah, YouTube homepage. The other six videos to the video series. So far, the first two videos are a blast and awesome to watch. So, that's it. Sorry for the little interruption, but I'll see you guys next time on the next RC Overload. Woo!